You're listening to Little Green Cheese, episode 64. Well, welcome back. I'm Gavin Weber, and this podcast is where you can learn about cheese making at home. Well, I had an interesting week this week, as far as cheese making goes. Anyway, I've been regularly turning the cheeses that have been that have been that are in my cheese cave. I've uh, got a Gruyere in there that I've been washing and turning every week, and uh, I did notice that a spot of Brevi bacterium linens had infected that cheese because a spot of water or um, moisture from the lid had dripped down onto the cheese because I've got them in um, ripening boxes and it had got onto the cheese and then the cheese rind had got moisture on it. So unfortunately what I had to do was wipe that spot with a little bit of water, I'm sorry, a little bit of brine and vinegar and that killed off the brevi bacterium linens so i've managed to recover that cheese no problems at all and then i uh, checked out the piora that i'm making which is a swiss italian style cheese similar to the gruyere and similar thing had happened so i had to do the same sort of thing anyway they're maturing okay and then i got to a, a munster that i was maturing and I found that it had a white bloom over it. It was actually supposed to be a red, a surface red, what, what do we call it? It was covered in a, uh, a white mould and it had um, hints of some blue mould as well because I'd left it for a week, um, as you do, and um, it had started to bloom. So it was at the three-month mark, the time that it was supposed to be, re- it was ready and mature because I'd made it way back in... Um, in January. So I got a simple brine solution and I wiped off all the the white mould. It it was just really only just set in, so it wiped off and so did the blue mould, no problems at all. And there was underneath, there was a nice red bloom still. And I cut the cheese in half and absolutely it was just amazing. It wasn't, it wasn't creamy, as in soft, creamy paste like you would find in, say, a camembert or a brie. It had a, um, or the texture so hard to describe. Uh, you, and you'll see it in Saturday's um, cheese making video on cheeseman.tv. But it has a, a, it had a paste that was smooth and creamy on the palate. But it looked like it had, when you got really close to it, it looked like it had really tiny little bubbles all the way through the paste. But when you cut through it with a knife, the paste would kind of stick a little bit to the knife. But the taste was amazing. So it was a cross between a, um, a, a washed rind red che- red mould cheese, the, the normal flavours you'd get there, and also a little bit of blue, just a, a tiny hint uh, of blue cheese. I took some to work and um, some work colleagues of mine sat around um, at lunchtime and we had some crackers and it, they all praised it. It was they, it was delightful. So I took some of the, the remaining part of it around the traps and, and uh, people around the floor tasted it and they said they loved it. So I called it my Blue Monster Monster <laughs> was the name I gave it. So um, so you'll see that on Saturday if you tune into. Uh, cheeseman.tv and have a look. That video will be released early on Saturday morning for those who um, want to have a look at that one. Anyway, in this episode, we're going to be listening to the questions from Ask the Cheese Man episode 15. Now, there's only one question. It's not really a question, it's a statement, but it's a really good one. And it's from one of those sarcastic comments that I usually get on YouTube around, oh, well, I'll just go and buy cheese at the shop. It'll, it'll, um, how do I say it? It'll be not only taste better, but it'll be more economical and it'll cost less and it'll taste 
it, it'll take less time. So I don't have to wait the three to six months for it to mature. Anyway, so I busted all those myths and anyway, you'll hear it anyway. So let, let's let's play that, shall we? Well, g'day, curd nerds. I'm Gavin Webber. Welcome to Ask the Cheese Man, where I sit here in the chair of cheesy wisdom and answer all your questions about home cheese making. Now, before we get into the questions, I have a few announcements. A couple of days ago, the channel reached 50,000 subscribers. Whilst not a major milestone in YouTube's books, uh, it has no special play button or anything like that, but that comes at 100,000 subscribers. It's special to me. Now, it's special because of you, my subscribers and dedicated followers, who have come back week after week to watch my cheesy antics and what I get up to next. It's because you come back and you keep asking for different cheese requests and questions that I continue to make these videos and serve the cheese making community as a whole. I'd like to thank you all very much for watching each week and for subscribing. Now, the other announcement is that I'd like to thank my patrons because they support the show financially. This week, I had a, a bit of an issue. My sound gear broke, and uh, you'll see that on Saturday's video where I had to produce something. The sound quality was not up to scratch. Anyway, thanks to their financial support, I managed to quickly get together some uh, uh, some fancy new sound gear and you can see here uh, it's a new camera mounted directional microphone um, and that'll make the sound quality of these Ask the Cheese Man videos uh, and any uh, stand up chats before and after chats of the videos sound a lot better. Anyway, thank you very much to all my patrons who support me financially. So on with the questions. Now this week I'd like to talk about a statement from a YouTube commenter that I'd like to tackle. It's from Flying Monkeys 325 and it's about my cheddar video. So let me read out the statement. It is meh. Might as well buy the cheese from the supermarket, lol. Uh, bet that coast, um, that's what they've written, uh, quite a bit to make and all those chemicals, dot, dot, dot. Only you have to wait three to six months to be able to eat. Meh, dot, 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 lol. Not worth the effort. Uh, that's exactly how they wrote it. Anyway, uh, not putting this person down or anything, I'd like to get a few facts uh, straightened around this statement. It is not correct. Now, I get these comments quite often from people and look, I know it goes part and parcel with having a YouTube channel and this is uh, this this cheddar video is quite popular. I know that uh, and it, it gets these kind of comments quite often. But what I wanted to do in this episode of Ask the Cheese Man is break it down uh, into its parts. So the first bit we're going to tackle is buying the cheese, the cost of it. So let's break it down. Yes, it may be quicker to go and buy the cheese at the supermarket, but to buy the cheese, to buy similar artisan cheese at the supermarket, and that's if you could find one, uh, it will be much more per kilogram that I could actually make it for. So to prove a point, I found that 100 grams of a good age cheddar would cost me about $10.95 Australian, which is about $8.21 US dollars. So that would make my 1.2 kilogram wheel, which was fairly big, which is about 2.65 pounds uh, of cheddar, would be worth, at that price, $131.40 Australian uh, and 40 cents. That's in Australian dollars. Or the equivalent in US would be $98.53. That's a lot of money. So what does it cost me? So that's if you bought it in the supermarket, the similar sort of artisan cheese, cheddar cheese. So what does it cost me to make my cheese? Well, let me tell you. I pay $15 for the unhomogenized milk, 
and that's 10 liters of milk okay so the equivalent is eleven dollars twenty three us dollars that's for 2.64 gallons of milk and the other ingredients is about one dollar australian which is about 74 us cents as it can't stands during uh, at this recording of this video for the other ingredients look sure i have to pay for all the equipment but i had most of it before i started making cheese and you would have seen that in the um, cheese making equipment video I posted a couple of weeks ago if you follow the channel regularly so I'm not going to count that there may be look there may have been one or two bits a bigger pot all right they cost me 20 bucks but I would factor that in over the cost of all of the cheeses that I make so I also have to pay for electricity to maintain the environment for the cheese over the over the total of the six months that I um, mature the cheese so I, work, I did the maths and I worked out that that would be about $5 um, of electricity because I have solar power on my roof uh, and that is fairly inexpensive. And I also estimated the cost over, it shared over many, many wheels of cheese in my cheese fridge. So all in law, all, the single wheel of cheddar cost me about $21 Australian for 1.2 kilos of that cheddar cheese. So that's $15.73 US for 2.65 pounds of cheese. And that's delicious artisan cheddar cheese. So that's about six times less than you would have to pay at the supermarket. So pop that in your pipe and smoke it. Now let's get onto the second part of the statement all those chemicals well i don't know about you but i don't see any chemicals in my cheeses so let's have a look at the ingredient list for my cheddar cheese um, using my recipe so my recipe has 10 liters of uh, full cream cow's milk and i know there's different uh, nomenclatures for types of milk so this is 3.8 percent fat which is fairly standard uh, for unhomogenized milk. So that's 10 litres or 10 quarts. Uh, I use an, a, a one eighth of a teaspoon, which is a dash of mesophilic culture, and that's a bacteria. Uh, 2.8 mils or half a teaspoon of calcium chloride, which is a mineral salt. Uh, and that's in quarter of a cup of demineralized water. I use liquid rennet. I use annatto, I use cheese salt, I use a cheesecloth, and in this case, um, because I cloth banded the cheese, I used coconut oil, or I could have used lard or butter. So, chemicals, let's have a look. Milk, no, it's not a chemical. What it is, there's a chemical structure to milk, but in the sense of all those chemicals, as the statement goes, milk, natural product, water, natural product, the bacteria, the culture, it's a bacteria naturally found in milk. Uh, calcium chloride, it's a mineral salt, naturally found. Rennet, if I used animal rennet, it would have been naturally sourced. Anato, it's a natural colorant. Salt, well, you can go and find it in the sea. Uh, and that's about it. So everything natural in my cheese. Now let's compare that with something like, oh, processed cheese food, which I could, an example, a good example would be Laughing Cow. Now, I don't know about you, but all throughout the world, there's a product called Laughing Cow Cheese, and it comes in little wedges, very popular cheese here in Australia, and I know it is throughout the world, and it is a processed cheese, comes in little silver foil triangle wedges. I'll, I'll let you know what's in it, shall I? So it contains pasteurized milk, cream, pasteurized cream, whey, ultra-filtered non-fat milk, less, less than 2% cheese culture. It contains natural flavoring, which means usually MSG, carob bean gum, xanthan gum, gua gum, spelled G-U-A-R, uh, salt, fine, carrageenum, carrageenum, I think that's how you say it, calcium phosphate, citric acid, sodium phosphate, sodium polyphosphate, carmine, modified food starch, and aspartame. Aspartame's the uh, artificial sweetener 
that has had uh, so much bad press that actually swirls the lining of your brain, the mucus around your brain in between your brain and your skull. Yeah, so uh, I see quite a few chemicals in processed cheese. Anyway, that's just a comparison between the cheese that I make and home cheese makers make and things like processed cheese or uh, very similar to Laughing Cow anyway, to all the processed cheeses, including uh, cheeses like uh, Velveteer, I think that's how you pronounce it, American cheese. Anything made by Kraft is usually a processed cheese. Uh, has many of these ingredients in it. Go figure. So that's uh, some of the chemicals for you. And lastly, it's not worth it. Well, not only is it worth it in a monetary sense, as we've already discovered, it is worth it in the spiritual sense. It's worth the sense of satisfaction. It's worth a sense of pride in one's work. It's also worth the simple joy of eating and sharing it with your friends and family. And that, I believe, is reward enough. And turning liquid milk into a solid cheese in your own kitchen is a dying art form. And I think it should be encouraged wherever it can. And oh, by the way, by the time you got to the supermarket, got parked, found your, che your artisan cheese, bought the cheese, found your car, drove home, I would have been most of the way through the cheese making process. It doesn't take that long and only patience is really required. Anyway, enough said about that. I reckon making your own cheese is always worth it. What do you reckon? Did I convince you? The patron of the week is Cameron Jedges. Thank you for your support, Cameron. If you would like to support the channel, so I can continue to make interesting podcasts and YouTube videos about cheese making topics, then pop over to littlegreencheese.com slash support and you can pledge your support there. Well, anyway, thank you very much, everybody, for listening to another exciting episode of Little Green Cheese Podcast. For upcoming cheese making workshops, pop over to littlegreencheese.com where you can also find my cheese making ebook, Keep Calm and Make Cheese The Beginner's Guide to Cheese Making at Home. It's available there in PDF format that you can print out. You can also find it at other good ebook retailers. Don't forget you can buy cheese making kits and supplies over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au. We ship internationally and we've sent out many orders this week to overseas customers. Thanks for listening everybody and we'll see you next week. You've been listening to Royalty Free Music by Kevin McLeod. You heard Malt Shop Bop and Call to the Dairy Cows.